Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at the last member of PMDG's 737NG family to be released. We are of course going to be looking at the 737-900 or more specifically for our flight today the 900ER. As you'll have seen from the introduction and probably as well from the title of the video we're going to be carrying out a ferry flight today picking up a brand new aircraft from Boeing's Renton facility. Renton is the modern home of 737 production our United 900ER here having just come off the production line. Having completed all of her flight tests, we're just giving the aircraft one last go over, we'll be carrying out a ferry flight over towards Denver tomorrow morning. In this particular case, PMDG were kind enough to reach out to me with a copy of the product, which of course we're going to be taking a look at. Included in the package, as we've said, is both the 900 and the 900ER variants. And this particular package retailing at 50 US dollars, so fairly competitively priced, although of course a little bit more pricey than the 600. I have to say that I've really been enjoying all of the variants of the 737 in the sim to date. It's probably one of my most flown jets within the sim. So I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what the 900 has to offer up here as well. That being said, we have looked at the 737 on a number of occasions on the channel at this point. I think we've covered the aircraft pretty thoroughly. In terms of what the product itself has to offer, the 900 isn't significantly different. There are of course some differences in the airframe and the aircraft systems as well, but there's certainly other people out there much better placed to demonstrate those to you than myself. So with that in mind, we're not going to be carrying out a full review of the aircraft here today, as I think we'd just be covering old ground which we've already been over. Instead, this is going to be somewhat more of a product showcase, though I'll certainly still try and give you a very good opportunity to see what the 737-900 has to offer. Hopefully as well it's going to make for a pretty interesting flight, certainly the departure out of Renton is pretty good fun as you'll see later on. With that being said, if you do want to see a full review of the PMDG 737, I'll leave a link to my video up above. For the flight itself, as I say we're going to be ferrying a brand new empty aircraft back towards Denver. We've got one more night here in Renton, we'll be ferrying the jet back tomorrow morning. The flight time over to Denver tomorrow forecast to be around 2 hours, it's about a 900 mile trip. We'll have a pretty light aircraft of course, the estimated takeoff weight is only going to be around 117, 118,000 pounds. We're going to be uploading around £18,000 of fuel for our trip, cruising our way over at flight level 390. In terms of the weather, the forecast tomorrow has quite a bit of rain in Renton, not a particularly pleasant morning for our departure. Denver though looks pretty great, and we're holding Colorado Springs as the alternate, the weather looks fine there as well. So we'll just finish up the last of our walk around here, again we've got one more night here in Renton, so we're going to enjoy some Boeing hospitality. Let's fast forward in time a little bit then, and I will join you tomorrow morning on the flight deck of the 737. So good morning and welcome then to the flight deck of the PMDG 737-900. Everything checked out nicely yesterday so we are good to ferry the jet over towards Denver. Unfortunately as you can see the weather not quite as sharp here this morning as it was yesterday but obviously still good enough for us to go flying. We've already pre-flighted the jet so we're pretty much ready to go here but just before we commence the start we'll run through a few pertinent briefing items here for the departure. So coming down to the CDU, firstly to the departures and arrivals page. We're going to be departing out of Renton off runway 16 via the Renton 3 departure. That's a conventional SID, it's pretty straightforward. Climbing initially on a heading of 150, and once we're up above 1000 feet, turning left onto a heading of 130. Initially climbing up to an altitude of 3000 feet and expecting uh, radar vectors onto the flight plan route. There is significant high terrain around Renton and the Seattle area. We've got the Olympic Mountains out to the west and the Cascade Ranges out towards the east. MSA for the departure is 7,000 feet, the highest terrain on the chart there around 9,400. Though it is just worth noting that levelling off at 3,000 feet initially, that is going to put us below the MSA until we get further climb from air traffic. In terms of the weather, not a bad morning. Again, there is some rain passing through, as you can see for yourselves, and currently 7 degrees OAT, so looking at the moment like we're going to need the engine anti-ice on for the departure itself and the taxi. We do fortunately though have a slight headwind down runway 16, we're going to be pretty limited in terms of takeoff performance. In terms of the taxi, again pretty straightforward. No need for a push today, we're just going to be taxiing straight ahead here onto the apron. Down at the other end of the apron here we'll be making a right turn. We're currently on the easterly side of the airfield, we need to cross over the bridge to the westerly side. Once we're over the westerly side it'll be left turn onto Bravo, crossing the active runway at Bravo 6, and then we'll take Alpha out to the right and all the way down to holding point Alpha 1 for a full length departure. So briefing is done, onto the init ref page, 
Obviously a pretty light jet here today. Nothing down the back, just the fuel we have on board. Quite a bit of fuel, we've got 18,000 pounds of fuel on board the jet. That's giving us a gross weight of 118.4 thousand pounds. As I say, we're going to be pretty limited in terms of takeoff performance. Runway 16 is pretty short. Indeed, both runways here at Renton are obviously pretty short. As a result, we've gone with full takeoff takeoff power, so 27,000 pounds of thrust. Once we're airborne though and climbing away, we're going to be climbing pretty nicely here at our present weight, so we can save the engines a little bit there. We've gone with a uh, climb to D-rate. The takeoff itself, pretty unusual for me. I don't generally use flaps 15 in the sim. Not sure how regularly it's done on the aircraft, but we've gone with flaps 15 again to shorten the takeoff run. Give us a nice low V-speed, so we have V1, 105, VR115, and V2 of 129. On the MCP we've got V2 selected, 129. Runway heading initially 165 and climbing up to an altitude of 3,000 feet. So we're off, renting ground, runway 16, taxi the Alpha. It's all good in terms of the briefing, running through the push and start flow for the electrical. Everything is set to required. Passenger signs, again, not too important for the flight today, but they are on. Hydraulics are set, the doors and windows showing closed. And just checking the windows visually there as well. Beacon, go on. Transponder, set through to transponder. The air panel, packs can come off. Got the APU bleed on there for the start. And for the master caution we've got fuel, elect, anti-ice, hydraulics and overhead. They should all clear up once we've had a good start. The fuel there is just for the pumps, so we'll turn all six pumps on. We do have a little bit of fuel here today in the centre tank, only around 800 pounds, so it is worth noting during the climb we're expecting to see a master caution for the fuel there at some point. Anyway, running through the before start checklist itself. Once again, fuel, all six pumps are on. We have 17,900 pounds of fuel on board the aircraft versus 18,000 on the flight plan. Passenger signs are on, doors and windows are closed. MCP, we have V2 129 heading 165 and a stop altitude of 3,000 feet. The takeoff speeds, we have 105, 115 and 129. CDU pre-flight has been completed, rudder and aileron trim is 3 and 0. Taxi and takeoff brief is complete, the flight deck door is closed. You'll notice a few stutters there, I think that's due to the scenery rather than the aircraft. Anti-collision light is on, and just cancelling the master caution there. There we are, good for the start, we'll start the number 2 first. Start switch can go to the ground position. We have start valve open. Pretty high EGT there, you'll notice, that's just as a result of having run the aircraft earlier. Ordinarily we'd want to crank that right back down before we introduce the fuel, but that would take quite some time, so just for the sake of today's video, we'll introduce the fuel at the normal point in the start process. There's 25%, number 2 start lever set to idle. All pressure is coming up. There's our fuel flow. And you can see the EGT as well there coming up now, so we do have a good light off. The low oil pressure caution is extinguished and expecting to see the start valve open portion extinguished around 56% N2. Cross runway 16, Bravo 7, Alpha 7, Alpha the ramp. Looks like we've got a band of rain passing through currently. There's 56%. Sure enough, we do have start cut out. Just waiting on the engine to stabilise. And it looks like we do have a good start on the number 2. We'll get the number 2 engine anti-ice on. And start the number 1. Once again showing start valve open. There's N2 rotation. And as before, fairly high EGT there, we've discussed that already. All pressure coming up. There's 25%, so fuel on. There's our fuel flow, and a good light off. Clearance dial, watch the one, western departure approved, wind 1706, to report airborne. All pressure cautions extinguished. And once again, as we come up through 56% and 2, expecting to see the start valve close. There's 56% and start switch back to auto.
Yeah, it looks like we have a good start on the number one. Engine anti-ice on for the number one. And running through the off start flow, so electrical. Just checking our generator outputs. Those look good. So we'll take the engine driven generators onto the bus. Heater heats. They're auto on this particular version of the jet, so it seems we leave those in the auto position. Anti-ice again for the engine selected on. Air conditioning and pressurization will take the APU bleed off. Engine bleeds can go on and the packs can go back to auto. Start levers are in the idle detent. Ground crew clearance, again not required here today. We don't have a uh, tug to disconnect. We'll visually check everything's clear before we taxi. If we do have a good start, the APU can come off. And for the flaps, again, a little bit unusual here, but we're going for a flaps 15 takeoff. 39 off as everyone. So flaps 15 selected. We've got verified takeoff speeds there on the CDU. Clear the message. So showing flaps 15. These speeds are checked. And the runway conditions are valid there for the current climate conditions. So we've got 180 at 3 on the wind. Wet runway, 7 degrees. So V-speeds look good, just waiting there for the flaps to come out towards 15 degrees. Two off, Roger. Have a good flight. So we have flaps 15 indicated with a green light. And running through the before taxi checks, the generators are on. pro -peats set to auto. Anti-ice, we've got the engine anti-ice selected on. Isolation valve is set to auto. Engine start switches are set to continuous. Recall is checked. Auto brake set to RTO. Engine start levers again are in the idle detent. Carry out a flight control check. Here we have full up, pull down, and neutral. Pull left, pull right, and neutral. And on the rudder, pull left, pull right, and neutral. We can close off the lower DU. And ready for the taxi, so we'll get the taxi light on. Same there for the runway turnoffs. All clear on the right. And same here on the left. Heart brake can come off. 99, Red Tower, welcome back. Runway 16, clear land. Shouldn't need too much thrust to get the jet taxiing today. Again, we're fairly lightweight, but just bringing in a little bit of thrust currently. We need to be very careful here as well with our taxi. We've got very limited wingtip clearance here as we make our way out over the apron, so we'll make sure we stay pretty planted here on the taxiway line. We're going to have very limited clearance here with the uh, Bellavia 737. Okay, so we are now nicely lined up here on runway 16. There's a bit of a break in the weather for the initial stages of the climb. Nevertheless, we are going to pass through a few bands of rain, I suspect, on the departure. Once again, we do have the engine anti-ice on to cater for that. Part brakes now off as well. We're just going to hold the aircraft here on the tow brakes as we let the engine stabilise. Again, just to avoid eating up any more runway than we have to. It's going to get pretty busy as well here during the departure, so we'll get the autopilot in as soon as we can. The engines are stable, we'll hit the toga switch. And we have N1 toga.
Rust is set. Let's check, do we have throttle hold? Gently back on the yoke. Need to be careful in the 900 to avoid striking the tail. You can see just how marginal the runway length actually is here out of Renton. We do have positive climb, the gear can come up. And showing LNAV so we can follow the lateral flight director. There's VNAV speed, so following the vertical as well. As I say, it's going to get pretty busy, so we'll get the autopilot in. Showing command. Up through 1500 feet, we should start to see the thrust roll back towards climb 2, which we now have. There's N1 on the FMA, FMC speed, VNAV out. 3000 to go, flaps can come through to flaps 5. And with the gear up now, we'll get the wipers off. So the jet now accelerating up towards 230 knots. And just about to level off here at 3000. There's our flight plan route. We'll assume we're still under radar vectors for now. Come through to flaps 1. Throw it out for a tower, runway 16, clear to take off, Victoria. And we'll go flaps up. Gear can come back through to the off position. Auto brake can go off. We'll just leave the igniters on a little bit longer here. We've got some more weather to pass through. And same for the anti ice. You can see leveling off here at 3000 doesn't give us much clearance with the train. We'll assume we've been given further climb now up towards flight level 110. There's 110 on the PFD. And we'll come into level change to do that. So 250 knots. And we'll assume that air traffic's now given us direct to waypoint modder. There's modder, we'll insert that on the top line. And you can see that's giving us a reasonable track. We'll execute. So we have LNAV, Modder. And climbing now up to 11,000 feet. I may have said 110 before, force of habit. So just monitoring everything here as we climb. Just burning our way through that centre tank, expecting to see the master caution for the fuel there any moment now. Just starting to clear some of this weather, so we'll get the start switches back to auto. And running through the after takeoff check items, engine bleeds are on, packs are on, engine start switches are set to auto, there's the low fuel pressure there on the centre tank pumps, those can both go off. Laps are up, lights out, landing gear is up and off, and the altimeter is staying for the time being on QNH of 3021, being in the states here until we're up through plot level 180 or 18,000 feet. So we'll just centre up our heading bug, about 20 miles here to run towards waypoint modder. Keeping the speed back at 250 knots for now. And for the time being we're clear of clouds, so we'll just take the engine anti-ice off. At least momentarily. United 1960, 40, You can see climbing very nicely as we discussed during the briefing there, obviously an empty jet more or less, so we're doing about 3,500 feet per minute, hence using climb 2 here. Still getting a pretty phenomenal rate of climb and saving the engines at the same time, so a bit of a win-win. Just brighten up the main panel here a little bit as well. Still fairly gloomy here below the cloud. Nevertheless, some pretty stunning views. Again, we're tracking out towards the uh, east now, currently. So coming over the Cascade Ranges. We should have Mount Rainer as well, you can see there just off in the distance. There's some pretty beautiful scenery here as we make our morning departure out of Renton. 1,000 to go, MCP speed, out of choir. And once again, we'll assume air traffic's giving us further climb. This time, all the way up to cruising flight level, so 390. American 591, you say maintain 7,000? Yeah, I'm so fine, I know. See so what VNAV gives us now. Okay, so we have N1, VNAV speed, now accelerating up to our climb speed, about 285 knots. And 390 there on the PFD. Up through 10,000 feet, so landing lights can go off. Alaska 503, total purchase for here, and I think you're in a winter train. And no need to worry, of course, today about the signs, no one down the back. Just come out here on the range again, on the nav display. So once we're overhead, waypoint model will be tracking back out towards the east. In terms of the progress page, 
During arrival into Denver with about £7,000 of fuel, I believe off the uh, top of my head our minimum diversion fuel was around £3,600. We'll discuss that more during the briefing later on as we make our way in towards Denver. During 92 miles to top of climb, 1645, so we've got about another 12 minutes here to get us up to 39,000 feet. Again, the jet climbing very nicely. The total air temperature now is zero degrees, so still keeping an eye out for that cloud layer. Once we come up into that, we'll take the engine anti-ice on once again. American 591, contact first, 133.65. So down to around 16,000 pounds of fuel on board. We'll just carry out another master caution check there. We did clear the uh, the caution there with the fuel pumps. Spirit wings 2956, contact approach 133.65. So climbing pretty nicely here as we discussed, all the way up to flight level 390. Coming up through 15,000 feet, so shortly we'll come on to the standard pressure setting 2992 here in the States. As ever, the cruise portion of the flight here is going to give us an opportunity to take another look at the external model of the PMDG 737900. And hopefully as well, I've got some pretty nice scenery lined up for you here as we make our way over the western United States and over the mountains and towards Denver. President 2167, shuttle approach, flight president heading, vector sequence, RNAV Yankee, runner 168, you set to maintain 10,000. Lap 1325, traffic 1 o'clock, 6 miles, westbound, a 737, 4.5%. Alaska 503, contact approach 133.65. Engine 2121, zero approach. Fly heading 240, vector sequence. RNAV Yankee, ready one through track. Engine 2121, descend maintain 8,000. Engine 8, whiskey mic, contact approach on 128.5. Number 662 Tango X ray, Denver approach, Denver altimeter 29066. Two uh, Christian, stand by on the effort. 51. Yeah, 2151, contact approach 125.75. 2575, yeah, no, I'm going to go on. Skywest 5068, turn right heading up uh, zero, question uh, 325 to join finally, clear visual approach, runway uh, 35 right. Heading 325, visual approach 35 right, that's 58. South Channel 613,000, sending on a clash on Lima, hello. South Channel 6, pressure right in. So, welcome back to the flight deck. As you can see, we have commenced our approach inbound towards Denver. It's coming through 16,000 feet currently, the speed just rolling back towards 250 knots. And we're showing about another 45 miles to run, expecting to be on the ground in around 10 minutes time. Showing drag required, we'll clear that for now. So we're currently flying the Flat E3 on our arrival, inbound towards Denver's ILS runway 16 right. Let's plate 10-2 Foxtrot. And for the ILS 11-4. As far as the star itself goes, pretty straightforward there. We're just tracking about now towards the waypoint Tushner. Doing a uh, TCAS TA there currently. Again, seem to have an issue with that in the PMDG 737. Don't have that with any other add-ons. Shouldn't be any AI traffic around or any multiplayer traffic. Got both of those turned off as far as airborne traffic goes. Anyways, as I say, tracking about towards the waypoint Tushner. We need to be 13,000 feet back at 210 knots. And we're showing about another 10 miles to run there currently. From Trishner, we're going to be joining onto the ILS transition. That takes us inbound towards waypoint Shred. We need to be mandatory 10,000 foot at waypoint Shred. You can see we've got 10,000 pre-selected here on the MCP. And from Shred, we'll join onto the ILS, tracking the loca and the glide down to an MDA of 5526. We've got 5526 set. Obviously, a pretty high barrier minima there. The aerodrome elevation at Denver is uh, around four and a half thousand feet, so significant aerodrome elevation. Significant terrain as well on the way in, we've just passed over the bulk of the Rocky Mountains there, so all of the terrain out to the west of the airfield. Again, speed coming back, expecting to make the turn inbound towards the runway fairly shortly, we're just coming again on the range on the nav display. 
So if the eyeless itself is on a frequency of 111.9, final approach course 173. The aerodrome elevation, as we discussed, is 5,434 feet. And down to a Cat 1 MDF 5526. This approach, climbing to 5,900 feet, then a uh, climbing right turn up to 12,000 feet on a heading of 218. So we'll set 12,000 foot for the missed approach altitude. Transition level, flight level 180, we've obviously already come through that, now coming down through 14,000 feet. And again, the speed continuing to reduce. As far as the aircraft setup for the arrival goes, we've got auto brake 1, got plenty of landing distance available, we'll go with idle reverse. On the approach ref, we're going with a flaps 30 landing. The approach 123, just select that once again. And a 5 knot wind correction, so the approach is going to be 128. Again, 111.9, 173, we've got 173 there on both course selectors. And 111.9 there on both of the nav radios. United 2628, contact approach 120.8. Terrain we've already discussed, there is significant terrain out to the west of the field, the MSA 9,200 feet. In terms of the weather, obviously pretty nice here for the arrival, a little bit of light cloud around. Uh, temperature on the ground should be around minus 4 degrees. Looks like we'll probably avoid most of the cloud here on the way in, but once again, if we do come into the cloud, we'll take the engine anti-ice on. Again, a little bit of a headwind for our landing onto runway 16 right. As we discussed, we'll go with auto brake 1 and idle reverse, planning to vacate off to the left onto delta 5. In terms of our fuel state, showing 7.6 thousand pounds of fuel on board the aircraft. Expecting to arrive with around 7,400. Colorado Springs is our alternate today, we need 3,600 pounds for the diversion, so we're good in terms of the fuel. And that makes sense, we're expecting to arrive here, I planned for an extra 50 minutes of fuel for the arrival. So commencing the turnout towards the southeast, and again we'll ultimately turn onto a uh, heading for around 160 for the ILS. In terms of our distance to run, showing 28 miles, so we'll keep the aircraft clean for now. Just centre up our heading bug once again. Uh, 2628 leveling 11,000 Lima. And 2628, don't approach, Roger. And of course, as we discussed, we're expecting to see the aircraft here level off at 10,000, from which we can intercept the glide slope. 581, okay, 35 left now, 280 or better, it's still advised we're at 310 right now. For the approach checks, recall is checked, air conditioning pressurization, we've got landing altitude of 5,400 feet set, and both panels look good. Speeds we've already discussed, the approach going to be 128 and flaps 30 landing. Minima, we have a barrier minima of 5526 and for the auto brake we have auto brake 1. That's the descent check is complete, just turning now inbound towards the runway. Just make out the airfield there off in the distance. About another 6,000 foot to go here in the descent. 413 on the bar and have to expect back just for the visual. Now we'll just keep the speed as is for now. We have about 23 miles to run, so we can start configuring. Lap limit speed for flaps 5, 2, 5, 0 knots, so we'll go with uh, flaps 5. There's flaps 1 initially. Southwest 2397, flight present heading back to the final, it's going to maintain 1, 0, 10,000. Present heading down to 10,000, southwest 2397. 1,000 to go. And we have flaps 1 with a green light. There's flaps 5 selected. And now coming down through 10,000, you can see we do have the loke and the glide slope, so we can arm up the approach. And we have VOR loke, glide slope armed, we'll leave ourselves in single channel. Not going to be an auto land today. So just levelling off at 10,000, we'll get the landing lights on. No need to worry about the signs. And we'll just let that speed continue to roll back. Drag required, again we can clear that. We'll keep the speed up a little bit for now, so we'll go speed intervene. Bring the speed back up to 180 knots. We've still got a few miles here till touchdown, around 18 miles. So we don't really need to be dragging the aircraft in. 10,000 feet. And the glide slope just starting to come in here as well. Once we've captured the glide, once again, the missed approach altitude is going to be 12,000 feet. 
We can centre up that heading bug once again. 413, just going to maintain 900,000. 900,000 at 413. And a little bit tricky here to see with the cloud cover, but again, we've got the, uh, the Rocky Mountains there out towards the west. So just coming through Waypoint Shred. There's VNAV out, and we're expecting to see Glide Slope capture in just a moment. So for uh, 23.8, just sending you the T-bar 3 with Lima. So we have MCP speed, Glide Slope. Missed approach altitude, 12,000 feet set. We'll maintain the config for now, we'll maintain 180 knots until around 7 DME. So just coming down through 10,000 onto the approach, we'll get the start switches back to continuous. Running through the approach checks, engine start switches are set to continuous, altimeters, we have QNH of 3016, set there on both sides, map integrity, we're currently showing 30 miles there on the RLS, and about the same there on the ND, so good there in terms of map integrity. QNH 413, reduce speed to 190. 190, yeah, 413. Approach, line of visible approach, your way 348. Another five miles to run here, we'll keep the speed for now. 11,000, once clear to uh, then 210, commuter 4370. And down through 9,000. About another 3,500 feet here in the descent. Looks like the airfield's actually just buried a little bit away here behind a bank of cloud. Still showing minus 7 degrees there on the total air temperature, so if we do go through that cloud, which Looks like we're going to, we'll get the engine anti-ice on here ahead of time. Just coming up on 10 miles to run. And we are about 3,000 foot above aerodrome elevation, so that's a nice little gross error check. Southwest 1006, can I tower 133, person 133.3. 33, good night. Six miles westbound on final 6,800 in Mount Arkansas. Just coming up on nine miles, another mile here, and we'll take the gear down. Major 209, turn the last heading 100, descend and maintain mount ourselves. Okay, it says eight miles, gear can come down. We can arm with the speed brake. And we are showing speed brake armed. Start bringing the speed back as well, 160 knots. So we have gear down three greens. And we'll go flaps 15. Maintaining 160 till five miles, and once again, V approach 128. Still looking good here on the glide slope and the loke. Just coming through that cloud, you can see now the lead in lights for runway 16 right. 2500. United 581, check in with your speed and contact approach 123.85. 2385, United 581, good day. American 1313, contact approach 120.8. 120.8, American 1313, Aircraft getting a little bit rocked around. We do have quite a wind here off the nose, 18 knots currently. Only supposed to be around 9 on the ground, so expecting to lose some of that headwind component. Just coming up from 5 miles. There's 128. And nice visual now with the runway. Two, two, nine, one, traffic, 12 to 1 o'clock, 4 miles west sound, 6,900. So speed rolling back towards the approach. Go flaps 30. Two, two, nine, one, clear visual approach, runway 26. And again, it's going to be a flaps 30 landing, so that's our final flap selection. Lap 30 indicated with a green light and running through the landing checks. Speed brake is on, we do have green light, landing gear is down three greens, flaps 30, green light, and that's the landing check is complete. So it's coming up on the B approach, three miles to run, about another thousand feet. The rad out there as well concurs with our altimeter. 
But as you can see, plenty of landing distance here. We're going to, as I say, probably roll through a little bit after landing. Vacate off to the left at Alpha 5. Traffic. Traffic. 1000. Let's check we are stable. Traffic. Once again, getting that uh, TCAS TA there from the PMDG 737. Seems to now be painting all of the traffic on the ground at Denver. Taking a little bit of a hit there as well on the frame rate, it seems, as the traffic loads in. Anyway, we are nicely established. We'll take out the auto throttle. West 2397, reduce speed to 190. 190 Southwest 2397. American 2368, reduce speed to 190. 190 American 2368. And we can disconnect the autopilot as well. 500. That's checked. American 1313, now turn right heading 280, back to the final, just in the maintain 10,000. Turn on the heading down to 110,000, American 1313. Southwest 2397, maintain 170 knots, the front. 70 to front, Southwest 2397. 200. Minimums. Yeah, we'll continue. Showing a little bit later on the glide, which is interesting. We are following the flight director. 100. 50. 30. 20. 10. Okay, back off the throttles. I think slightly long there, but again, we've got plenty of runway available. So we'll just come into idle reverse. And Delta 5 just off on the left, so it's starting to come now onto the brakes. So there you go ladies and gents, I do hope you enjoyed our outing, our ferry flight in the PMDG 737-900. Once again not looking to review the aircraft per se as I think the 900 broadly offers the same as all of the other 737 packages from PMDG. That is to be expected though, it's not a criticism, we are of course just looking at another variant of the 737-NG family. And the PMDG 737 family is of course a very accomplished set of products, so the 900 right up there to the same standard. I do think it's worth mentioning that I actually ended up enjoying the 900 much more than I initially thought I was going to. I'm a big fan of the classic 737, so I've always preferred the proportions of the 600, the 700 and the 800. Initially I did think that aesthetically the 900 probably wasn't going to do it for me, but I actually really like how the jet looks. To my mind that longer fuselage almost gives the 900 a 767 aesthetic in terms of its proportions. And particularly as well with the United delivery here, I thought the aircraft looked really great. The 900 and the 900ER as well do also provide their own unique set of challenges and attributes. Firstly, we did discuss it briefly during the takeoff, but with the longer aft fuselage section of the 900, you do have to be careful with tail strikes during the takeoff. So that of course does make the aircraft that little bit trickier to handle. Heavier weights as well with the 900, so higher V speeds. The ER opens up a few more flying opportunities as well, the extended range tanks obviously giving you the opportunity to fly greater distances with the aircraft. So whilst of course again at its core the 900 doesn't offer anything vastly different over other members of the PMDG 737 family, there are still I would say enough nuances there to make it worthy of consideration if you own previous members of the PMDG lineup. Once again the product is retailing at $50 so pretty competitively priced certainly in line with the likes of the Phoenix Airbus A320. The aircraft is cheaper than both the 700 and the 800 variant, of course though more expensive than the 600. So the 600 is still hard to beat and would certainly be my recommendation if you are just looking to pick up one variant of the PMDG 737. In terms of the entire NG family, it's really nice to have it complete now within the sim. Hopefully as well we'll see a few more improvements and changes going forward. I gather that PMDG are still pretty busy at work with the aircraft's EFB and it would certainly be nice to see that arrive at some point in the future. Similarly, I gather some texture improvements are in the works which would certainly be great. Generally speaking though, at this point the PMDG 737 family is of course very refined, very polished, an excellent set of products. I do think that the PMDG 737 family is well worth a look, again it's one of my favourite jets in the sim, I think it's actually the jet we've flown the most on the channel at this point. Again PMDG were kind enough here to reach out with a copy of the 900 and they also did the same with the 700. I did however purchase both the 800 and the 600 myself, which hopefully goes to demonstrate that I do genuinely enjoy the product. 
Anyway, thank you to PMDG once again for letting us take a look at the 737. Thank you very much to all of you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. If you fancy some more 737 action, then I'll leave a link to a couple more videos here on the screen. And lastly, as always, a very big thank you to all of my channel members and patrons for all of your support. I do hope that each and every one of you is having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care and I will see you all again soon.